Well, good morning, St. Barnabas. How are you guys doing today? Good, I hope, right? It's a beautiful day outside. It's not raining yet. So, our service today begins on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading, a reading from the book of Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 4 and 9 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, 
There on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say together Psalm 78, verses 23 through 29, on pages 696 and 697 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let's read together in unison. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and led out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. The second reading, a reading from the letter to the Ephesians chapter four, verses one through 16. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also ascended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. On the next day when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. 
When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. You know, the meaning of these words has been debated for centuries. Is it literal? Is it figurative? Just what exactly did Jesus mean here? How can a person be bred? What exactly happens on that note uh, during the time of communion then? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You know, I've had a, a different opinions on these words throughout my time in ministry. But just a few years ago, I finally came to what I think is an intimate understanding of what Jesus is saying here. I was reading a blog by a colleague of mine from Texas named Jason Evans, and in the blog, he gives what I am convinced is an extremely well-researched explanation on Jesus' controversial claim of his body being bred for the life of the world. He writes, In the Roman world of the first century, everyone was religious. There were a number of religions, or possibly, possibly more appropriately, a number of tribal spiritualities, and even more gods. It was regular practice for people to offer a burned sacrifice, usually meat or grains, to their god. And it would not have been uncommon for those people and those who were with them then to eat a portion of whatever had been offered in sacrifice to their god. The belief then was that the essence of that god was within the sacrifice, and when eaten, was now within whoever ate the food that had been sacrificed. So when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, whoever believes in me will never thirst, 
Jesus was telling those who heard him that day that if they ate of the spiritual bread that he gave, they were partaking in his life. And that meant they were partaking in the very life of God. You know, I have to say that knowing this, knowing the culture of what was going on behind the scenes of why Jesus would tell people that consecrated bread and wine were his flesh and blood can be eye-opening. You know, people who lived in the Roman Empire during the first century, they would have known exactly what Jesus was talking about here. They would have known that Jesus was claiming to be God. And they would have been shocked at that claim. And yet later in the gospel, when Jesus blesses and breaks bread at the Last Supper, when Jesus says, take, eat, this is my body, each of the disciples present would have no confusion on what was being said. Each of those disciples would have known that when they received the bread and the wine of that first Holy Communion, those elements were far more than just bread and wine. They believed, you see, and they believed that they were partaking in the life of God. They believed that somehow bread and wine, blessed and broken, become the spiritual food and drink for all humanity. That when we partake in the Eucharist, we're sharing in communion not only with each other, but also with God. That God is becoming part of us. That our very souls are being fed in a way that sustains us both in this world and into the next. It's all so interesting, isn't it? You know, as I was thinking about all of this and, and being nerdy as church nerds are, are bound to be, um, I started looking for, uh, uh, you know, some other things that, that might go along with the story or with the, uh, the reading, and I found a really, really great story, an interesting story about the moon landing that I have never heard before. A story that I think highlights the importance of the Eucharist. So once they had touched down on the moon and before the whole one small step for man was spoken. Some of you may remember that. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin announced that everyone listening in, wherever they were in the world, should take a moment of silence and give thanks in their own way for the events that were taking place that day. And for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, well, that meant taking communion. Mr. Aldrin had brought with him a small communion kit from his church with consecrated bread and wine. Mr. Aldrin reports, I poured the wine into the chalice our church had given me. In the one-sixth gravity of the moon, the wine curled slowly and gracefully up the side of the cup. It was interesting to think that the very first liquid ever poured on the moon and the first food eaten there were communion elements. And just before he partook of the elements, Mr. Aldrin read the words which he had chosen to indicate his trust that as man probes into space, we are in fact acting in Christ. He writes that. He, he writes that he sensed especially strongly a unity with his church back home and, and with the church all over the world. He then read, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. You know, through that beautiful story and through the scriptures we read today, we're able to see just how we're connected in communion with Christ with each other, with, with the church throughout history. We can see how our spirits are fed and connected to the God of the universe. We can hear Jesus' words echoing down through history. I am the bread of life. We know that we are in him and he and is us. 
For we are a community of believers joined together in the sacrament of the Eucharist. And as a community sustained in Christ, we believe that somehow through this spiritual food and drink, Christ dwells within us, inspiring us then to love our neighbors and live into this countercultural and sacrificial way of the cross that we call Christianity. You see, we believe that there is love and, and grace and mercy and redemption and compassion and forgiveness and love and life for all people through Jesus Christ. We believe that there is life and death. We believe that through the waters of baptism we have died with Christ and we believe that we live with Christ sharing in the hope of his re resurrection. And every week, every week when we celebrate this mystery of life in Christ at the table, every week as we partake in the spiritual food of consecrated bread, we hear those words the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. We hear those words and we know that we are connected to life in Christ with each other as well, that, that he abides in us and we abide in him. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our service continues on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People, the Book of Common Prayer, page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for the just and proper use of your creation, 
for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for Arlene, Gail and Reed, Leon, Nancy, Anne, Rosie, Lily, David, Maria, Peggy, Barb and Jerry, Johanna, Matthew, Idella, Dave, Bruce and Liz, Mildred, Steve, Allison, Teresa, Deborah, Susan, Leslie, Courtney, Cami, Robert, Kathy, Dave and Mary, Robert, Tyler, Briley, Mary Ann, Sue and Casey, Janice, Katie, Father Carney, Sister Cassandra, for the Yulduzian and Matarician families, and for the families of those who have died from the coronavirus and any others who we now name either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. From our cycle of prayer, for the Episcopal Church in Delaware, Trinity Parish, the Reverend Patricia Downing, Rector, the Reverend Charles Lane Cohen, Associate Priest. We pray for those in our military who serve our country both at home and abroad. We also pray for their families. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise you. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom and any others who we now name either silently or aloud. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All right, well, good morning, everyone. It is so nice to see you all today. I love that we're doing church together. Please take a seat, if you would. It's a beautiful day, right? It's not raining yet. <laughs> so uh, I have a couple of wonderful announcements that I'm very excited to share with you all today. Uh, first and foremost, we have hired a new sexton. Uh, his name is Marlon. And uh, he starts, I think, either today or tomorrow. So we're very happy that uh, Marlon will be joining us. 
And uh, we have also hired our new music director and parish administrative specialist person. Uh, that's a long title. We'll probably have to think of something more catchy for them. Um, but their name is Will Thomas. In fact, Dr. Will Thomas. Uh, he is a uh, he holds a Ph.D. in organ performance. Uh, so we are in for quite a treat. Uh, those who were on the search team for him uh, got to hear him play, and, and he even made us sing, which I think was a miracle in and of itself. Uh, uh, but uh, it was really, really something. So if you were on the search team and uh, feel like uh, chatting with people afterwards about uh, Dr. Thomas or Will, uh, please do. He's coming, uh, I know, tomorrow uh, uh, to start looking for uh, apartments and whatnot. Uh, so we're very excited that he'll be joining us, and he'll be joining us uh, September the 7th, I believe, is his first day. So, yeah. Any birthdays or anniversaries? No? Okay. Well, there are uh, a bunch of announcements in your bulletin on the kind of bulletin board page. Out. And uh, yeah. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave us, himself, gave us himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Do you think your girls would want to come up and help? No. The girl, yeah. Do you think they'd want, you guys want to come up and help? Thanks. Yeah, I could use some, some help today. Come on up.
Our service begins with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer. So, go ahead and point right there. Ready? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now we step back and we bow. Ready? Good job. Come back. Now you can come back and do that. Ready? After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now we do the bow again, so step back. Ready? Good job. Go forward. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. job. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
I like to hold on to the altar when I do this. Her kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. You hold that, okay? And you hold that. And I want you to lift it up real high and put it forward, okay? Ready? Like this. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on Him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you. There you go. You guys can go sit down. Thanks so much.
Our service continues on page 365 in your Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
You want to give the dismissal? Yeah, say, go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ready? Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.